our video for today, we'll focus on the problems involving thin-walled pressure vessels. Now just so that we can recall directly what we have discussed last time, I have included here all the derived formulas. Now this is for the tangential stress, this is for the longitudinal stress, and this is for spherical vessels. Now in our first problem, we have a cylindrical steel pressure vessel which has a diameter of 400 mm and a wall thickness of 20 mm, and it is subjected to an internal pressure of 4.5 mega Newton per m squared. Now first, we have to calculate the tangential and longitudinal stresses in the steel. Now first, we'll identify our given. We have our diameter which is 400 mm, so that'll be our D, and then we have a wall thickness of 20 mm, which is T, and then our internal pressure is 4.5 mega Newton per m squared. However, we know that mega Newton per m squared is just MPA, and then as we have discussed last time, this is also Newton per mm squared. So our internal pressure P is equal to 4.5 MPA, or let's just actually use Newton per mm squared. And so first, to calculate the tangential stress, we'll just use our derived formula. Now we know that the tangential stress is equal to PD divided by 2T. And so this will be, our P is 4.5, so 4.5 Newton per mm squared, and then times the diameter which is 400 mm, divided by 2 times the thickness, so 2 times 20 mm. Now this will cancel, and then our resulting unit will be Newton per mm squared, because this is our tangential stress. So we will have units of MPA, PSI or the like. And so plugging this in our calculators, we have 4.5 times 400 over 2 times 20, that'll be 45. So our tangential stress is 45 MPA. And so we already have our answer for this one. Now next, for the longitudinal stress, we can just actually divide this by 2. However, if we are to use our formula, we have the longitudinal stress is PD over 40. And so this will be 4.5 Newton per mm squared times 400 divided by 40. And so our longitudinal stress will be 22.5, or simply half of this. And so this is our answer. Now, as you can notice, this value of stress is greater than this one. And so that means this is our critical stress. And so when we are designing, we must consider the tangential stress. And so for the next problem, we are to solve the internal pressure if the stress in the steel is limited to 120 mn per m squared. Now this stress is our tensile stress, which may be the tangential stress or the longitudinal stress. However, since we know that the tangential stress always governs, we will just use this formula. And so we have the tangential stress is equal to PD divided by 2T. And then our allowable stress is 120 mn per m squared. So this is our allowable tangential stress. However, in actuality, this is also our longitudinal stress. However, this will govern. But I'll just show you later why. Now plugging this in, we have 120 newton per mm squared because this is just MPA is equal to P, which is our unknown, since we are looking for the internal pressure, times the diameter, which is 400, divided by 2 times 20. And so our internal pressure will be 12 MPA. And so this is our answer. Now sir, what if I used the longitudinal stress. This will be our result. Now let's just copy this one and then let's change this into 4. And so solving P, we have 24 MPA. So P is equal to 24 MPA based on the longitudinal stress. Now for this question, we must pick the lower value. Now sir, why did you pick the higher value here? Now in here, we are actually solving the stress or the tensile stress. And so we'll pick the critical stress or the more stressed wall. However, in here, we are actually solving the internal pressure, which is essentially an applied pressure due to the fluid. And so recall that when we are looking for the safe load, we'll always pick the smaller one. And so in here, we'll actually pick 12 MPA. Because if we'll use 24 MPA, then our system will burst along the longitudinal line because this stress will be exceeded. Now if we are to try that, let's use 24 for this one and then over 2T, our stress will be 240 MPA, which is more than our allowable. And so that's why we'll use the safer load or the lesser internal pressure. Now I hope this is clear. Again, the tangential stress will govern. And so if we are asked if the internal pressure were increased until the vessel bursts, this has an S, sketch the type of fracture that would occur. Now since the tangential stress is larger, then the splitting of our vessel will be along the longitudinal line because this is what's resisted. And so our vessel will be cut right here. And then we'll actually have two of these because it will split along the longitudinal line. So this one. And so if we are to draw the splitting, it will actually look like this. And so let's just copy this one. And then this will be our answer for letter C. And so once this happens or bursting happens, this will be the resulting fracture because this portion will be cut because our stress right here is already very large and the walls of our tank will not be able to accommodate the internal pressure. And so in here, our tangential stress is already exceeded.